of Eiffel or something like this. Thank you very much. So, <laughs> so this is the T-score I can explain later on about how this is working. It's just a kind of uh, normalization we are doing here. And then um, we are looking for spikes. So hikes or spikes. So we are looking for outliers, um, always compared to the time window of seven days, which mean, means um, there, there is a spike if there uh, is nothing happening for six days. And then we compare the last day, um, the, the, um, the most recent day, to the six days before. And uh, this gives us some kind of ranking, and we are picking out the uh, most um, high-ranked high top 10 places which show up. In fact, we don't yet have places. We only have tile numbers, which means uh, a center coordinates or something. And so um, we observed that, of course, sometimes you have clustering um, of tiles, meaning autocorrelation in uh, geospatial um, statistics, which means if you have high activity in one tile, the probability you have high activity in a neighboring tile is very high, of course. So we don't want to show all these um, tiles each separately. We are trying to cluster, to spatially cluster these tiles and only represent one um, as a representative of this, cl uh, of this tile cluster. Then uh, we still uh, don't have place names. We still only have coordinates, meaning, meaning the center coordinates of the tiles. And uh, so we are using Nominatim to uh, reverse geocode and, uh, and looking for names, uh, which is in fact another challenge which I want to mention, mention just afterwards. And uh, finally, if we have these top 10 names, um, the Twitter bot um, is taking those and tweeting these uh, place names. Um, um, or in case he couldn't retrieve something or fails on, um, otherwise, he uh, at least says that he will come back tomorrow, uh, hopefully. So what the first thing we realized is uh, some, something you pr probably would have expected. The, this is an analysis which have, I have taken from Martin Reifer's work, which I will refer. Um, so we have crawl, uh, some challenges uh, or so-called so problems um, in analyzing because, of course, we want to avoid bias. Um, in fact, there are some, some crawling activities which are not detected uh, below the radar of, of the admins, actually. And there are quite some very famous ones, of course. Who knows what this one is? <laughs> Null Island, the zero, 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 of course. The boy from the, from the uh, weather, weather service, at least. And there are, but there are also other um, um, artifacts which are explainable. And then we have another artifact which is not really explainable unless you know Sputnik or, or other Russian or, or rocket science. I don't know of because, in fact, it could be something like a trace from Baikonur. I, I, that, that's just guessing, wild, wild guessing. And we also have other kind of uh, weird crawling activities. The first one, um, Mar um, um, my student, Lucas Martinelli, you probably know from yesterday, uh, found out in his later time was uh, this kind of analysis of log traces of, uh, on level 18 for one, for one day. So. Uh, we have here um, some, some traffic center. We have here the University uh, and ETH of Lausanne. Uh, I mean, that's just the Lake of Geneva. And, um, and it's really weird how along um, highways 
those traces appear, but at least we can assume there are people just uh, having online access during their drive or something. What's, uh, what's less explained and still unexplained uh, are those kind of, um, um, how do you call those, uh, comet-like comet <laughs> traces Martin Reiver um, um, blocked in his blog post about, uh, which are also still yet unexplained. These are the, the references of this early work um, by analyzing the, uh, the absolute amount of views visually. Another challenge is um, the clustering around one single um, hike or spike, so several neighboring spikes, which I just explained before, um, which uh, shows up, um, it would show up like this, where, where, where we have uh, almost perfect correlation between those coordinates, which are simply neighboring tiling coordinates. And this is something we can find out and uh, only um, display one um, of out of four or something, just to give space to a real different um, hikes. Then a third challenge is the ranking itself of trending places, meaning that's a very uh, well-known problem in time series analysis that we have on one on the left hand, we, and these are the standard deviations, so it's already normalized, but uh, even it's normalized, we have places where uh, no activity is going on. These are the days. Um, so it's analysis of around 30 days of one month. And uh, these are the amount of, uh, it, this is the reported count from the tie logs in steps of 10 because it's zero. And then from 10 upwards, it's an integer. And uh, so in this case, it's 20, 22, and then it's zero activity in this tile again. And then we have a spike here, and, and then we have no activity. So given we are here, and uh, it, this is an obvious spike, uh, how do you correlate, the, uh, how do you compare, sorry, how do you compare this to, um, as I um, say always, to say the tour of Eiffel in Paris, where you probably have many, many views every day. So it's uh, um, linear, but uh, it starts with 800 or something, goes up to 3,000 and more. And how do you ca compare those two? Because uh, and, and we, we won't have a bias. We really want to detect um, outliers because of sudden activity. So um, this is some, some kind of um, guessing we had to do uh, to compare those. Of course, we, we normalize all this stuff, but uh, there, there is still some kind of coefficient um, which uh, somehow is our guessing to make those two activities comparable. The final challenge I want to present is, as said, already said, we only have coordinates. We don't have place names. So in, in the case of uh, one example I will show, you will see the problem uh, all of a sudden because um, probably you want to catch the most important place nearby or within a bounding box nearby the center coordinate or within uh, uh, this given bounding box. How to find out and if you, if you can tell me um, a nice geocoder which is capable to return the most important place around one coordinate within one radius, um, I would be interested in. It's a separate challenge of geocoding. Nomita, nomina team works very well, uh, rather, ra rather okay on this. I, uh, I would wish to have also some point of interest because if there is some, some news about Mount uh, of uh, Matterhorn in Switzerland, I would expect Matterhorn and not the city of Zermatt if it happens at the Matterhorn. So uh, I have three examples of successful correlation between the, the Twitter, between the Twitter bot, the trending places, and uh, 
There are two sad ones and one um, happy news. The sad one in this case is the wildfire and in Canada, you probably um, remember. It uh, is a huge one. It, it's uh, finally got two times the area of uh, the country of Luxembourg or uh, one-sixth of whole Belgium was uh, destroyed by this wildfire. And in fact, some days later, I mean, it happened uh, 3rd of May, finally, and uh, at the 3rd it has been beaten, and then it still showed up on the 4th as, uh, as number 3 in, these, in, in, these, uh, in this graph. In fact, I have to explain the graph because it shows two different uh, rankings. Um, this is the ranking according to the standard deviation, and this is the absolute number of views on a logarithmic scale. So uh, please uh, be careful that, that we have here some... Uh, no, this is absolute now in, in this case, but still it's starting by uh, a, a very high number. And uh, this uh, uh, turned, we changed this to, lo to logarithmic scale after, uh, afterwards. And the, uh, the ranking here is the increasing deviation. And then the second one is the good news. The, there was, a, in the 1st of June, uh, Switzerland opened the longest railway tunnel of the world, the Gotthard Base Tunnel through the Alps. Um, which connects uh, the south with the north. And uh, then uh, on the north uh, side, there was one, uh, um, sit one place where festivities have taken, and this was Flüden. Then the sad one was uh, the, in, in Italy, the, air, the earthquake. And, and then Martin uh, visualized this, and here you see the problem. It's all over this uh, region of Marche and Aquino, uh, but the center tile which showed up is around here, and uh, Nominatim returned just one of the largest villages uh, in this center tile. Um, I mean, at least Marche is also the name of the region, so it's not too bad, but it's a problem, it's an issue. Interesting, actually. So, final statistics. I have analyzed, um, um, so the, the bot takes five hours, just fiddling with uh, SQLite, not because of Python. And uh, the, the reporting period uh, of this slide is uh, about uh, 160 days. And uh, 125, um, there was um, some result. And the top 10 countries, have been Russia, and, and then uh, half of the occurrences, the US places, then German places, and so on. And the top 10 place names overall have been the Russian places in front, Ukraine, uh, and then uh, Kazakhstan. In fact, uh, when I saw this one, it could in fact um, have been a launch from Baikonur, but uh, that's just uh, some guessing. So, uh, the final open questions of this work is, why are there so much Russian places? Uh, is it my algorithm, or is it really some unknown activity nobody could explain up to, my, up to um, me up to now? The uh, other question is, what's the influence of this crawling? And uh, 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 do we still have bias of places with spikes after uh, zero activity? Um, or is there other bias to be expected from this analysis? Those are the open questions. So the final open questions are, um, do you know Seacliff or Athens? So my hope was that uh, people would chime in and explain, I know why Athens shows up uh, and, and would reply. But in fact, uh, probably because people uh, think it's only a bot, and not me, they are, they are not replying that much, I would have expected. So still, if you have explanations, you can send it to me anonymously, um, to, because it's just fun. And uh, I know correlation does not prove causation, it's not a proof, it's just uh, some evidence, but it's, it's kind of cool. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Stefan. Um, I'm afraid that due to the technical problem at the beginning of the session, we can only take one question. So we are not really too late compared to the other auditorium. So questions, take your chance. Uh, hi. Um, would it be possible to easily remove all the scrolling activity if you have, uh, for example, hashes of IP addresses so you can filter out all this? Uh, because typically crawlers has just one IP, so you can eliminate it quite easily. So to say, I don't have IPs, you know? Uh, yes, not, but if you would have uh, not original IPs, of course, but hashes or something more anonymous. Ah but something to identify users. That's a question I would forward to the admins because it's, but I can understand the admins really don't want to have any, uh, any means to, um, to trace back that you have been uh, making holidays in Alaska um, or in, 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 in Greenland or, or something, uh, being the only one make, making, making holidays or something. Okay, yeah. maybe as this should happen before, during the anonymization already, this kind of filtering. So this data is I, not I going discuss, out. Okay. I discussed this, but uh, I would, it would be nice, and of course Google would, would do something like this, and, uh, and it, it would be uh, uh, very convenient, but uh, it's really a matter of really anonymous uh, to, to have privacy in this data. 